Welcome everybody. Um, I'm glad to get you together today to go over some follow-up strategies. Um, most of you probably know me from uh, uh, Automotive Industry Exposed or Mastering Direct Mail. That's two of my courses that a lot of you uh, chose to participate in. But uh, some of you might just be on my list and that's okay too. I just want you to be able to have a chance to, to get to know me and mo know my direction and who I am and, uh, and, and what I'm trying to do here. Um, we want to talk about follow-up strategies and naturally because automotive is my industry that I chose for my niche, it's going to be a, a lot of it's going to be focused towards that. Um, but we can also talk about follow-up in other industries as well. But I wanted to go over a couple things and show you the importance of follow-up. And the main reason why we decided to talk about this, most of you know Brian's in the Caribbean right now on a cruise, but he, uh, he landed a independent dealership last week. And the guy did everything in his power to try and dis discourage him or, or persuade him away uh, to, to, to not continually to follow up. He kept saying, call me in 15 minutes, call me in 15 minutes. And luckily, Brian was uh, adamant enough and, 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 and pursued the guy and called back, called back, called back, and, and continually followed up with the guy to where uh, he, he landed a pretty good deal. I think he ended up at like 2250 for uh, some social and, and a little bit of SEO for an independent dealer, which is nice. That's a good deal. So <clears throat> I know a lot of uh, a lot of us have the uh, five or six hundred thousand dollar, you know, smaller clients. And when you hear our numbers, we're talking about with automotive. A lot of people kind of get that wow or aha factor, and uh, they're pretty much pretty realistic with automotive. You you just see larger uh, larger response, lar larger return on your investment, in your time. But the main thing I want to talk about with follow-up strategies, um, with the truth here, um, I want to give you some great information real quick. Um, the truth about how to follow up and land the deal, did you know that 80% of sales are won on the 5th to 12th contact? So I know for a lot of people it's tough to go in there and, and actually um, – pitch you know your first time and you, and you get down a little bit if you don't get you know close the deal the first time but it's that's uh, looking at industry standards that's not even expected so don't let that dis persuade you or, or discourage you it's the follow-up after the fact um, it says yet 40 48 percent of the people you meet in business whether you're networking or trade show events or however you're getting your leads will never follow up with you past the first contact conversation and I can honestly say I'm guilty of this I meet people and I think, wow, I need to call that guy or call that lady, and you lose the business card or you throw it in your briefcase or you, you, whatever happens, and you never follow up. If you want to start talking about successful industry and successful business, it doesn't start with just driving revenue. The way you're going to drive that revenue is with proper follow-up. If you don't have a follow-up system in place, you need to get one, and you got to make sure whether you got to go buy a, a calendar or a uh, – a, um, you know, a, a binder book or whatever you got to do. I've got, uh, I've, I've got a whiteboard in my room. Obviously, all y'all know I'm not married because my wife would, <laughs> no wife would ever allow you to do that. However, I have a whiteboard in my room. I'm a little bit over the top, but that's how I keep up with my stuff, and that's how I make sure I follow up and I'm on time to things. Um, I don't have the greatest memory in the world. I'm, I'm guilty of that. I will forget things if if I don't write it down and put it in front of me. And the way that I've uh, found for myself is I have a calendar and a whiteboard right inside my closet and uh, it's kind of a walk-in closet so it's uh, it's pretty nice and, and that's how I keep up with it but you want to make sure that you're following up with your people and don't let the first contact uh, you know what however it goes don't let it discourage you and I'm going to talk about that a little bit today we're going to talk about uh, some other stuff some more truth real quick 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect 28.5% of salespeople make a second contact or st and stop. So one out of four people only make the second contact. And then 12% of salespeople make more than three contacts. So realize right now, like, you know, sales is something that you have to hone and craft and, and train and, and get on these webinars and listen to other salespeople or get into the group and and ask questions and learn how other guys are selling or girls are selling, but realize right off the bat, 
even if you're not a salesperson or sales type or you know if you're not like me I'm a sales guy right right off the bat if you'll just get your follow-up process down you'll put yourself in the top 12 percent of closers just just by properly following up because regardless whether or not you're a great salesman or not the other people are slipping and not doing proper follow-up getting busy getting you know, distracted with other projects, buying other shiny objects, whatever it is that you're destroying yourself doing, and not staying on the, not staying at your goal, and that's to continually to follow up. Um, you know, just because you hear no once, just because you're told I'm busy today, just because you got put on ice in the showroom, and those of you who walked into dealerships know what I'm talking about, doesn't mean you don't follow up. Now I know your ego or your you know this guy's just not professional and you and you can think of a hundred reasons to give up but until somebody says no then follow up one more time <laughs> I mean, literally, like don't let it take you down like that you know what I mean you gotta follow up so think about it the point of I'm trying to po point out here is if you can just have your consistent follow-up procedures you will put yourself in the 12 percent that make more than three contacts and I'm gonna show you why that's important So what's the phrase of the day? Follow up. Don't forget it. Here's the deal. Let's talk about first contacts. Let's let's talk about what you're really trying to sell. A lot of you might be psyching yourself out or getting yourself all excited or nervous that you're going to have to have all the answers. You're you're going you're going to freak out thinking that you know, you got to be able to answer any question this guy throws at you because he might not he might not think you're professional if you don't have it. Those of you taking some of my coaching classes or have listened to me on webinars before, I always like to sit down and I have some preliminary questions I always ask a dealer or a client. And the reason why I like to ask those questions up front is because it gives them a chance to, to answer the questions. All I'm doing is ask, asking questions. I don't have to think on my feet for the first five minutes. It gives me time to kind of slow down and get get comfortable in, in my environment. It gives me a chance to really uh, show them how to, uh, uh, you know, to, to allow them to speak and, and talk about themselves and, 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 and it ha I get more time to pre prepare and to strategically ask the correct questions. So a lot of you know my preliminary questions, I always ask people how many cars you're selling, new, used, are you doing any secondary, how's your service, how many ups, how many turns, you know, I ask all the questions. So I'll, one, I'll have all the information for the from the dealer that I need. And two, I'll, I, I get a chance to settle down. And if you'll start doing this, you'll find it to be a lot more effective in your closes. But start thinking of your first contact as something a little bit different than, man, I'm going in. I have this one meeting with this one friend that has 12, 12 rooftop deal, and you know this is it. You know, you got the whole Eminem playing in the background, freaking out, thinking, you know, this is my one shot to make this work. It's not your one shot. You got to start looking at contacts or your first contact with a, in a sales pitch as more than a one call close scenario. Will it happen? Yes. Will you find that more of those will happen the more people you pitch? Yes. If you have one deal and get your feelings hurt and never pitch somebody else again, you're just going to fail your industry and your business and that's not going to help you and that's not going to make you successful and that's what we're here today is to make sure and help you get successful first contact network with a specific intent of setting the stage for follow-up meaning let them know that you know have a reason to contact them back hey I can get that for you you'll love what I'm going to show you when can I get that back to you next week when will you be available Go ahead and start setting up your second follow-up. Don't have all the answers to everything the first meeting. Let them know you. I mean, they know you're human, so don't try and act inhuman, or you're not going to be. Very, you're not going to build any rapport with them. Okay. Improve your first uh, contact conversations. Now, this is things that you can do with role playing. You know, I always have these role play calls. A lot of you, some of you jump on, and some of you choose not to, whether you have a mic or not. And I know it's embarrassing. It's not fun. It's not fun to role play, but if you'll role play with either yourself in the mirror or with, with, with somebody that you can hold yourself accountable with, pick somebody out of one of the automotive groups or something like that and say, hey, listen, do you mind if we call and role play with each other? Just get your first contact conversations and prove them.
get used to what you're saying. Really, the best way to improve your first contact conversations is to walk in doors. I promise you, every time I walk in a door, I don't sound perfect, but I sound a whole lot better than I did when I started. Um, three, set the stage for future conversations, kind of similar as number one. Um, you you want to you know when they ask certain questions, if you don't have the answer, don't be afraid to say, "Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that proposal together for you. We're gonna meet up, and I want to show you about the reputation product I wanted to show you." When would be best for you, Tuesday or Wednesday? Great, 12.15 or, or 1.15. Call me crazy, I always set appointments on point fifteens because people tend to show up more. I don't know why. Maybe that's even a lie, I don't even know, but I was told a long time ago, so every time I set an appointment with somebody, and just try it if you get a chance, set it by quarter hours. And I don't know if it sticks in people's mind more or if they know that you're so busy you're actually considering quarter hours. If you're considering whole hours or half hours, you might not be as busy as a guy doing quarter hours. Just some advice. Try it. Try it in your stuff. Increase the number of prospects you are in conversation with. I'm going to tell you right now, that's the secret sauce. That's the that's the end all of end alls. It's funny because some of you know or some of you might know. I sell a direct mailer a lot. Um, that is a scratch off mailer. And every single person that scratch it off wins. And it will bring in between four to six hundred ups in about four days. And any dealer that's hired like super sales teams, what I did in the past, they're not afraid of them if you're doing the work. When they get afraid of them is when they have to do the work. <laughs> they're like, oh man, these, uh, these people came in, all they wanted was prizes. I mean, it was, it was a mess. Well, What's the bottom line of your of your efforts? At the end of the four days, did we sell fifty cars at four grand a copy for two hundred grand gross? Would you have done that any other way? No. It took the hard work. It took the hoarse voice. I would leave these sales with no voice. I'd have I'd have blisters on my feet. Could could I think of a hundred other ways I would rather do these sales than actually doing them the way I'm doing them? Yeah, but none of them produced two hundred grand gross. And when I left, I walked out with you know eighty and ninety thousand dollar checks for me and my team. So you can try and circumvent or take slower precautions or find easier ways or isn't there some way that you know there, there is ways you can warm up leads and 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 actually get out there and you know maybe have some people call you, but ask yourself this question right now today: Do I want to be successful? Because if you do, you got to create action, and and if you can't create enough action with inbound marketing, you know, pool marketing, you're going to have to go out there and push, and to push is to walk into doors. I have a lady that I won't mention names that works with us. She bakes brownies. It's the most genius thing I've ever thought of in my life. It's a great rapport builder. It, I, I I thought back and I was like, oh my god, I remember this one lady that used to bring me cookies. I used to buy from her every month. I spent thousands of dollars with her. One, because she was sweet, and two, she was sweet enough to bake me cookies. And be honest, when you walk into a dealership and you're handing out brownies, do you think somebody's going to be mean to you? No. Nah. Walk in doors, man. It'll change your life. I don't want to get off the, the subject here, but increase the number of uh, prospects you're in conversation with. You will see your business turn into a success. And be honest, in 12 months from now, when we're all sitting on one of these webinars and you've walked into five dealerships a day or five clients a, a week, and 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 you're you're billing out seventy, eighty thousand a month in business. Are you really going to remember the times you walked in, or those times you were scared? It's going to be nothing, man. Move past it. Get get through it. Don't let it bring you down. Bow up. Be bigger than you are, man. So, <clears throat> number five, develop a win-win relationship that engages prospects and builds connections. Meaning, um. A great way to be a win-win is, and I've, I've told you all before, when you go in, say, listen, you know, I just want to have a few minutes to show you something. If you don't have a few minutes, I will give you a free consultation. I do normally charge $500. However, I'll waive that if you'll give me 30 minutes of your time any time you got that you can fit me in next week. It's a win-win. They get a free $500. They get a free consultation, and you get the pitch. Develop a win-win relationship that engages prospects and builds connections. 
Discover how to pull your prospect forward to the second conversation and beyond. Meaning, if somebody, you know, a, a quick way to do that would be if somebody says, well, I really want to know about this reputation management. Well, I got to do a little bit of research for you and I, I, and I can do you a complete report. So let's meet the second time. That's, that's discovering how to pull your prospect forward to the sec second conversation and then push them into the third and fourth meetup. Build the know you, like you, trust you factor. You know, I use comments like, if they ask me a question that I don't know, I say, uh, honestly, I don't know the answer to that. If I guessed, I'd be lying, and I'm not here to lie to you today. That's a way you can build the trust you factor. Um, get them to like you. You need to build rapport with them. Um, you know, the, the, the quickest way to, to, to build rapport, to get on somebody's personal level, is to be able to t call them by their first name. So when somebody says, my name's Sid Michael, say, great, nice to meet you, Sid Michael. Do you mind if I call you Sid? Get on a first name basis with them. Build that, build that rapport and, and, and get personal with them. And to make them like you, find out what they're into. When you're asking these rapport questions, are these preliminary questions in the beginning, you know, know that, uh, know that, you know, a lot of these questions are, are uh, look on their desk and see what, you know, sport teams or see if their kids play baseball. You know, those of you with kids always ask how many kids they got, share what your age is and what their age is. You know, build rapport. You can still get to the point, but never be so fast to get to the point that you don't build rapport. I'll remind you this. If somebody is irritable or angry or upset or too busy to listen to you, you don't need their business anyway. And you don't want it. Let them know you're a professional. You know what I mean? But you don't need their business. You, you, you can move on. If you're walking into five stores a day or five stores a week or whatever number you put yourself on, I promise you you're going to close business regardless of, of how these people react. Don't let, them, don't let them bully you or scare you or give you a bunch of weird turn downs. You know, if, if it sounds confusing, I, I'm not afraid to even say, hey, man, I just want your business. What is it going to take? And then just shut up and listen. I promise it'll uh, it'll 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 make some sense. All right, so I'm going to see if uh, we got some questions real quick. All right, seeming desperate. Um, good question. How do you effectively follow up without seeming desperate? Um, well. First off, when you when you position yourself to follow up, you don't say, "When can I follow up and get that check?" You know what I mean? You uh, you say anything but how you want the check. You know, you you when you follow up, you say, uh, you know, it's something to be like like we talked about a win win for them. When can I follow up with you and get you that report on how your reputation looks? Or when can we sit down and I can give you that consultation on your reputation? You're asking them something that's a win to them. Uh, you're not asking them, you know, something that's only a win to you. When you only ask a win to you, that's when you sound desperate. When you're showing, you know, interest in them, then, you know, let them know. I'll use an example. The guy I just spoke with on the, uh, I, I just had a guy call, right before I do uh, these these uh, webinars, never fails, I have somebody call me. I had a guy call me wanting direct mail out of Columbia, Missouri. And when I was talking with him, I was like, yeah, I'll get that back with you. Hey, you got my cell phone number now. Don't be afraid to call me. I'm a single guy. I'm 24-7. And the reason why I say that, do, do I really mean call me at 3 o'clock in the morning? No. But I want him to, by me saying I'm 24-7, let them know that I'm committed, that I would wake up at 3 a.m. and take their phone call. You know what I mean? So let's see here. Let's see what else we got. Tony, I do. You know, you know what? I had the big hundred dollar. He asking. He's asking about my whiteboards. I had those big hundred dollar whiteboards, and it looked so gaudy. I went to Staples the other day, and they had these peel and stick ones that are awesome. I bought little uh, twenty four by eighteen inch peel and stick whiteboards, and uh, I put them up just inside my closet, uh, so I can look at it whenever I'm getting my uh, stuff. Uh, Lou. Um, are the contact attempts combo of email, phone call, and drop-ins? Yes. 
Yes, they are. You know, a, a, an email is a follow up as a as a uh, walk in as a follow up. I, I personally and anybody that's ever talked to me will tell you, if I have a reason to walk in, I would prefer to walk in. If I don't have a, you know, if it's something that I can just, you know, it's something I need to do real quick, a phone up follow up is is not bad either. You know, but a walk in is a little bit harder to uh, um, be a little bit harder to uh, to to turn away. So, um, let's see what else we got here. We're we're sitting on uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Is that the slide you are looking at? Somebody saying the slides aren't changing. All right, so. Without moving too fast, and and I want to give y'all some good intent here. When you're making your uh, when you're making your follow-ups, understand that the first no make everybody tell you no twice. But don't be discouraged after the first no or the first reason why they can't buy. And sometimes they won't even tell you no. They'll tell you, well, I need to talk to this person or talk to that person. Because understand that only two percent of your sales are going to made on first contact. Now that number will increase as you get better in your pitch, but this is talking about industry standards. This is the average. This is who. This is everybody out there. Only two percent of sales made are closed on the first contact. So don't get yourself so worked up. And I use. I'm guilty, man. I did it too. Don't get yourself so worked up on the first contact, thinking you got to have all your stuff ready. You got to answer all these questions. Because realize, if you took every salesperson in the country and divided it, only 2% of them closed the first contact, man. So give yourself a little bit of a break. Understand that your first contact isn't to really make the sell. Understand the first contact is really just setting up future contacts, which does what? Establishes rapport. Does what? Gives time for things to marinate and get in. Does what? Gives you a chance to get your foot in the door. Does what? Gives you a chance to be a familiar face and not, you know, they're as nervous meeting you for, for the first time as you are pitching them for the first time. Because the last thing they want to hear is some hard closer that won't get out of their office. You know what I mean? But 3%. After your second contact, if you average all the thousands and thousands of big boys that go out there and close people, all the bad boys, all the people that are supposed to be the greatest salespeople in the world, 3% of them make a sale after the second contact. Funny, right? You, you probably, now, you got to ask yourself, how many people quit after the second contact? So how many deals are out there that just never really got followed up on properly, that have just kind of left floundering? Why do you think they have, like, software now with like ad roll and stuff where you're 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 in, you're increasing your website conversions you know it's it's so 10 years ago to talk about website traffic now all we care about is conversions same thing with sales man you want you want to you want to do follow up and create and 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 build your your conversion on your sales you want to build your your close ratio you want to drive some revenue back into the company so you can stay alive you want to keep your direction so you know where you're going, right? 5% of sales are made on the third contact. So I'm going to ask you one more time. How many people would have given up after the third contact? Be honest. Because a total of only 10% of the sales have been closed. So there's 90% of the business out there that's still, still existing that's still ready to buy, they're still in the market, but you didn't take time to build the rapport with them. You didn't take time, you, 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 you wrote them off, you prejudged them, you, you thought, ah, oh, screw them, they don't want to buy, that guy's wasting my time. Now, is there some scenarios where the guy's going to be wasting your time? Yes. Is, is there any reason that you shouldn't still go in there if they're along your way and, and stop in and say, hey, what's up, man, just want to say hey to you? You know, remember this, and this is especially in the car industry. Maybe you go into a store and the guy's nice to you, but he blew you off. Do you know what the chances of him being working in another store in 30 days is? 
extremely high. Turnover is massive. So when you got somebody being cool to you, but yet they might not be in the market, doesn't mean they're not in the market later. That deal I got today that I was talking about, the guy in Missouri, was sent to me by a guy I worked with eight years ago that I haven't talked to in two years. He just mentioned my name on a Facebook group, and the guy called me because he knew I was good at mail. Now, the guy that I worked with eight years ago, blah, 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 I mean, was there any reason to ever, you know, be nice to him or keep in touch with him? Of course. Let everybody know what you're doing. Still go back. Let them know who you are. Maybe you don't put them on a weekly revolving visit. Maybe you put them on a monthly revolving visit. But you try and contact them. Every single person you ever come in contact with, you, you didn't do your job if you don't leave there with knowing one thing that they're passionate about, whether it's the, the Steelers or, you know, the Braves or the Falcons or if they love hunting or fishing, anything. You should always try and, and focus yourself to get that one piece of evidence or that one piece of information so the next time you run across something, the guy's into fishing. You're out on the weekend with your mom looking at garage sales, wasting time. And you see 10 fishing lures for 25 cents. Pick them up, man, and go take them to your buddy who knows into fishing. You know, uh, you got tickets to the Braves, and you know, I, dude, I've done this a lot. I've got tickets to the Braves. I can't go. I've got a webinar. I've made other plans or whatever's happened that I just really honestly don't feel like driving all the way downtown. Oh, that's right. Casey Coffee at Gwinnett Place Forward loves the Braves. Run by there. Hey, Casey, man, I don't know if you can use these. Here's your two tickets. Give them to your top salesman if you can't. Whoa, 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 Sid, what have you been doing? Man, I'm too busy, but I'll come by next week and show you, man. I've got some mailers you'll love. Wait till you see what we're doing with social media. It's going to blow your mind. What are, you do what are you doing with social media? Nothing? I'll see you next week. You see what I mean? You have to, you know, use this. So to establish one contact and think they're done or to establish a second contact and get frustrated, or even to establish a third contact and quit. Now let's go one step further. Fourth contact. 10% of sales are made in the on the fourth contact. That's better. That's good. Let me ask one more time. How many people would have walked in there four times? How many people would have contacted this guy four times? How many people would have not you know, just moved on and thought, okay, the guy doesn't like me or doesn't want to deal with me. All of us would have. A lot of us would have, right? Here's the cool thing that I noticed by looking at these, these percentages, okay? When you get blown off the first time or you, it didn't go the way you thought the first time or maybe you do get another appointment but you didn't close the deal and you thought you were going to change your life today with a $5,000 contract, right? You know what's exciting about knowing the next time you get to go see them? your chances of closing them increase every time you do it. Every time you, you get sent out of there, but yet you have a reason to come back, you've got an increased chance of closing them. That is awesome. You should be excited about it. You, you know every time you go back in there, you're increasing your chance of closing. Statistics show it, whether you're a great salesman or not. And you know you're becoming a better salesman every day because you're training. I'm excited about that. I, I, I would look at certain, uh, you know, certain appointments is to be the same. You know what I mean? And, you know, let me look through and see some, I see a ton of questions. Let me try and answer some of these real quick. A lot of us agreed that we wouldn't go in there three or four times. Okay, this is a great question. Uh, Tom, he, he's, uh, he goes, um, so I now have people to call back from last year. Um, what are some good lines to get back into the prospects after a long time? Um, <clears throat> call them up and say, you know, hey, this is Sid. I was calling you back. I know you showed a little interest in reputation management last year. Um, I see that you're obviously, do, you know, building and growing. Um, are, are you wanting to get a little bit more serious about your about protecting your reputation this year? 
hey, you want to talk to me? I got some new stuff. I want to show you how to give everybody in the building a raise. You know what I mean? Um, have you talked to anybody? You know, I don't know. It's it's tough after a year because you let them cool off. It's kind of like if I didn't email y'all for a year and then all of a sudden came back. It's uh, it's hard. You gotta you want to you want to keep you want to keep that rapport. You want to keep that that uh that connection. You know, but um, just call them up. And say hey, you got new exciting things. Whatever you've picked up in the last year, direct mail or if you picked up uh, if socials just now started getting, I don't know what all you offer, but whatever new you offer. Say, listen, I know you, you weren't interested in the rep management, but you got to see what I can do with social. Give me 10 minutes of your time. I'll give it to you for free. You know? I know you're busy. So am I. That's why I want to meet now. Um, so if they say no in a polite way, after the first contact, you should still go back. Um, this, is, this is what I honestly, 100%, truly, with all my heart, believe. Anytime two people meet, there's a sale made. That's a fact. I'm telling you right now, it's a fact. E even is even not even in sales situations with with your mom or, or meeting your in laws or even when you met your girlfriend or your wife the first time. I promise you, you don't think you're a salesman or you do think you're a salesman. Either way, you you sold her. <laughs> you sold her on the big package, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. If, if somebody says no, that means I didn't listen enough because I didn't hear what they were asking or where their weakness was. Now, occasionally, are you going to run across the guy that said no at all and just going to combat every single thing that you say with a rebuttal because he's really just not interested and he's trying to act like he's got his, his game in line? Yeah, a know-it-all, a weasel. He'll struggle all his life. You know what I mean? But genuinely, when you sit down and you build rapport with somebody, if you listen to every single thing that they say that they need, and if you interview them properly, they will tell you, and you will have a solution. There's a deal every time. Now, you're right. Occasionally, you get that guy, but I hate to hear no's. And honestly, I, I'm a firm believer. I make people say no twice. I, I don't even hear them the first time. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I, maybe I didn't go over this correctly. Because everybody else I've showed this to is jumping at the opportunity for it. So obviously I missed something. Make them say no twice. Let's see here. We got another question. It says uh, email like a personal news release, website update. Uh, email's a nice little way to contact them. Um, but if you haven't talked to them in a while, you know, I would uh, walk my butt in the door, call them directly. Don't hide behind curtains. This is a face-to-face -face business. We're, th th this is the truth. When, 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 and I've talked to a lot of you on the phone. I've talked to a lot of you in webinars. I've talked to a lot of you via email or in the group. Yes or no, answer this question right now. Did you buy my product or get on this webinar because you want to have a successful business or a more successful business in 2013? Yes or no? Because I, I can tell you what you want to hear, or I can tell you the truth. And uh, I don't feel like I would be, um, I don't feel like I'd be giving you what you can get out of me if, uh, if I told you what you wanted to hear. Truth is, you need to walk in the doors. You need to walk in the doors, but I want you to pull that, that, that pressure off of you a little bit because I want you to pull that pressure off of you a little bit because so, I don't want you to think that you got to close them and have the answers to everything. I want you to know that all you're walking in there to do is, to, one, make a friend, two, find out what they love to death, three, set up a second appointment. Now, that's easy. That's not hard. You're not, that's no pressure. You don't have to do all this homework and, and, and you know, get everything together so you have the answer to every little question. This is not your final exam. In fact, you can fail and you'll still pass. Because you can take as many tests as you want as long as you got the, the cojones to walk in the door, right? So, anyways, not to get too far on that. So, one thing, so 80% of sales made are on the 5th to 12th contact. Now, that's amazing, but it's realistic. And, and, you know, I started thinking about my contacts. I feel like I closed them down pretty quick, but even some of my existing clients, 
when they call and I, and I sell them some additional mail or I, like I got this one guy to start doing some social stuff, I was like, I didn't even close him down on the first contact. Even when he called me and asked me about it, it took about five or six follow-ups before I actually got the deal. And it's true. But you got to know that you give the, uh, you got to follow up. Now, Brian probably kill me to talk about him when he's on the boat, but I love the guy to death. You know how many times he followed up with a guy? He called the guy once at night. The guy said, call me tomorrow. I was on the phone with him in the calls in the day. He called him once during the day. The guy said, call me back in 15 minutes. He called him. He said he would call Brian in 15 minutes. Brian called him in 15 minutes. The guy blew him off one more time for another 15 minutes. Brian called him back in 15 minutes. Then the guy said he called Brian. Brian waited, called him back. Brian went through almost six follow-ups in 24 hours. Now most people would have thought, all right, this guy's turning me down. He's obviously not telling me the truth. He don't want to. He don't want to lay it on me. He don't want to say what it is. But until the guy says no, and if you take the Sid's route of thinking, until the guy says no twice, keep following up. Don't let him. Don't let him get you down. What's the worst thing that can happen? I mean, you, you got to fish on. You just got to set the hook. So, all right. So, let's see. Uh, I don't know how much time I've I've already went or not, but. Um, Hopefully, I've given you all a little bit of uh, content, a little bit of information here that's going to push you through on that follow-up and to remind you. Um, those of you in the automotive course, you know the third's coming up on Wednesday. Got to hit the ground running. Everybody knows the end of the month, beginning of the month's a tough time to call on dealers. But starting Wednesday, every single one of you should have some people to go see. I'm talking about walk-in doors. No emails, no scrapers, no secret way to get a lead. No sitting at home hoping somebody calls you. I'm talking about if you want to be successful, put your best clothes on, grab grab your cards. If you don't have cards, it don't even matter really. Get your business cards, walk indoors, and make friends. And set them up just for an additional follow-up. I promise you if you'll do this every week in 30 days, your business will be light years different than it is right now today. Don't make excuses. Don't don't say you don't have gas money because Sid will send it to you. Don't say that you can't. You, you know you're embarrassed to do it or for whatever reason. Don't make excuses. Step out there and and and, and take a chance. I've always told everybody if you're scared to uh if you're scared to cold call, go karaoke one night. It'll really break down the wall for you. So the last thing I want to talk about, and this is the truth, and this is the mentality that I want every one of you to have, because whether you're a wolf or a sheep. You can always become a sheep. If you're a wolf, you can turn into a sheep. And if you're a sheep, you can become a wolf. Every time I make a decision or if I'm looking at my, my life or my business, I think about myself. Am I a wolf or am I a sheep? I think there's no question what I am. I'm a wolf. I'm not the sheep waiting for it to happen. Take responsibility. Everything is under your control and your responsibility. Do not lay back and let our government or anybody else decide your future. Your future is in your hands and your hands only. And you need to be the wolf and lead the pack, even if you're the lone wolf, even if everybody around you is laughing at you. Look at those pictures of Sid in those suits. <laughs> look, at, look, look at Sid with his page. <laughs> Who does Sid think he is? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't care. I'm a wolf, man. All you, all, all the, all the people that that are that are hating. If you're creating haters, you're doing something right. If if you're out creating action, that's going to cause criticism. With criticism, creates haters, man. And if you're out there creating haters, here's to you because I'll see you on the on the upside very soon because you're, you're gonna you're gonna start seeing some business close. So every morning, I want everybody to ask themselves simple questions: Are you a wolf or a sheep today? You need to be a wolf. You need to have that wolf mentality. So, um, all right. So that's about it. Any uh, any quick questions that anybody may or may would not have on some issues they've had walking into a dealer, or any good stuff I can answer real quick while you got me live? Uh, that a lot of people would would know about. Let's see. We got a big one here. Let me read it. Is part of the rapport to continue education, continue educating them versus trying to pitch them as a, as a follow-up? 
do you feel this is more of a gut or you know you know when the pitch is and and honestly in most cases or scenarios people are going to ask you so what's the price and and when they ask what's the price they're asking they're asking and maybe we'll talk about but they're asking to buy so you have ways and I can show you ways you have ways to ask people if they're going to buy without saying hey are you going to buy like for instance and I'll just give you examples cuz I do this I did this in the car business a lot you never ask somebody do you want to buy today that was so tacky I hated that old school mentality but you would ask somebody you know hey could you consider seeing this vehicle in your driveway for the next 3 years is this is this the color you would want well yes Sid, it is what are they saying they're going to buy so when you feel that they're ready to purchase and they're going to give you a buying signal signal move on with your pitch move on for the close but as long as you can continually educate or continually give them information and they're listening and not kicking you out the door then you're still establishing rapport and it's going to end up being a close I don't see you having to do this more than two or three times or once or twice even before you're going to find out whether you got something or not and the only reason why you would continually educate after the first or second visit is if you're if you chose to start educating them on some other product or some other type uh, service that you can provide Let's see what else we got who would you go for first the GM or the owner Ugh. I'd go after whichever one would, would, would allow me to talk to them. And, um, you know, unfortunately, as people, as people get, like, higher and higher up, they tend to get more removed from reality. But, honestly, if you could talk to the owner, talk to them. I mean, that's the guy that's definitely going to be a decision maker. And if you get him on your side, he's going he's gonna to put pressure on the, uh, on the GM. All right, uh, we had one question where the the, the lady or the uh, the Mercedes store that's owned by AutoNation, and they said AutoNation had to approve. Um, you need to contact the director at AutoNation. There's a sales director. Contact them um, and find out if it is him to approve. I, I'll be honest with you, that could have been a left-handed turndown because a lot of dealers, I mean, they're not they're general managers. I mean, they can sign the checks, but they can't make a decision. If they see, if you build value in the necessity of, of what you're offering, I promise you that guy can write you a check for it with, without any approval. So let's see what this says. It says, you said the first contact should be to make a friend, find out what they love, set up a second appointment. Can you give us an example of this dialogue you might use? Um, does anybody want to get on and let's uh, role play some? Let's role play right here for anybody. It's kind of hard for me to be both people. Um, first, all right, so I, I won't mention names, but somebody said, Sid, I have a cheap looking car. What if they ask me, why do you drive this cheap car? Don't park in front of the dealership, park in the back. <laughs> if it bothers you that much. Second off, I, you know, I've driven nice cars, and I've driven bad cars, and I've driven good cars, and I've driven whatever. You're better off in a in a decent car than you are a nice nice car. I mean, I had a I had a 2007 S550 Carlson Mercedes. It was sick. It was in Dub Magazine. It was hot. It had 22 inch wheels. It looked like it was a rap video, really. And when I I, I learned real quick to quit driving that to dealers because it was awful. I would hide in the back. I would hide the uh, I'd hide the uh, I literally hide my car in the back of the dealership. It just doesn't, uh, it's not good. Sometimes it was good after they got to know you, but it wasn't good when you first walked in. They thought you were a shark. Okay, here's a great question. Todd, how often do you follow up once you made the sale? Um, how do you juggle all the clients? You, you just, that's part of the business, man. You got to follow up. I constantly follow up every, I, like with direct mail, I know they do something every once a month. So I always kind of give them a, call midway you know and I'll find out <clears throat> like 
my one of my big clients I'm dealing with right now, he's a um, he's a platform over 12 stores. So I've actually established relationships with his managers at the stores. One, because I don't want this guy holding me over the fire telling me that the mail is not working, right? So I, I contact his manager directly and go, hey, how'd that mail go, man? Get some appointments, sell some cars, great. And then I will call the platform manager and report to him what I what I know about his store. Hey, man, that's not, that, that's awesome. Uh, Gainesville just did uh, 78 appointments, sold 35 cars. Not bad, huh? And just, you know, have a reason to keep talking, continually talk to him. Um, all right, so let's see. All right, hold on a second, hold on a second. We got, okay, went into a Toyota dealership last week for a maintenance sense. I have a 1990 Camry. It was because of the old car that I scored a second meeting, yes. Totally improv. That's right. They love older cars. That's awesome. I, I call that, for lack of a better word, I call that weaseling, and I'm a weaseling mother. I'm just telling you, I weasel consistently. If If I have a reason to walk into somewhere to get tires or... If I take my car for oil or something like that, it's if if I have a dealership that I've had a hard time getting through to, I will take my car up in there and service that sucker so fast, just because I'm like, hey, I'm well, who are you? What do you? I ain't got time. Okay, well, I'll go sit back with my car that's in your service department. You know what I mean? They'll never say that, but if they did, you're prepared for that, right? There is nothing wrong with a uh, with a uh, giving yourself that opportunity. I, I I love it. That's good. All right, so <clears throat> here it is. Every morning when you wake up, I want you to ask yourself, are you a wolf or a sheep? In fact, I'd like you to put in the Facebook group if you're going to be a wolf or a sheep because that mentality right there alone, my friend, I'm going to tell you right now, will make you successful. If you decide to start being a wolf and decide to start carving your own ground and take responsibility for your life because only you and yourself can, you're going to see, you're going to see business change right before your very eyes. Um, you got to be excited and ready to hit the ground running. All right, so I hope that helped everybody. Um, um, we got a lot of stuff coming up. We've got the uh, thing in uh, October or the weekend of the 27th. We've got the workshop in Atlanta. If if not all, I'm sure you know we've got a bunch of people going. But if you're not going, try and consider it. Try and get that weekend open. That's going to be invaluable information that you're going to learn live with me and Brian right there with you working in a workshop. It's not going to be a pitch fest. There's going to be nobody pitching. In fact. It's just going to be us working with you and teaching you um, and working with you and, and doing uh, role playing and, and working with you in different situations. We're going to show you how to write PR articles. We're going to show a bunch of stuff. But um, other than that, we got some other stuff coming up. Thursday night, I'm going to have something with Daryl Eves. I don't know if any of you all know him. He, um, he, he does some stuff with uh, YouTube, and he is the best at it. So I'll send you all some emails telling you all about that. But uh, by the way, Decide right now if you're going to be a wolf or a sheep, and you'll decide whether or not you're going to be successful or not. Talk to you all later. Thank you.